So everybody's settled, so I think we should just really make a beginning. I think we're just about five minutes delayed, so we should really catch up on time. Uh, as the first National Competitiveness Forum, I think this is, this is an initiative that we have done with the U.S. Council on Competitiveness. Uh, we have the President of the Council on Competitiveness with us here today, uh, Deborah Smith and Chad Evans. So thanks a lot for uh, being here and actually supporting us for really creating this and pushing forward the agenda for the country and pushing forward, forward the idea of competitiveness. In fact, we were talking about the whole idea of make in India uh, that our Prime Minister said yesterday, and I think we are, uh, there are some very huge synergies in what we are trying to do and how the whole agenda for the country is actually building, and we want to be part of the uh, uh, what you call country building exercise. So thanks a lot for being here and supporting us today and being part of this journey. Uh, Deborah, uh, so we have a quick keynote by uh, Wilfred Albert. Uh, unfortunately, Wilfred was not able to come here because he's hospitalized, he's down with dengue. Uh, so couldn't really help it, so wish him speedy recovery, but we have a written speech from him. Uh, so Rahul, who's his, uh, uh, what call, who heads the office here in Delhi, uh, so can I actually ask you to come here and uh, say, say the words on behalf of uh, Wilfred? Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. So first of all, uh, on behalf of Wilfred, thank you so much, uh, everybody, for turning up today. Uh, we do believe we are at the start of what will be a very exciting journey. Uh, India has come through the throes of some of the most difficult times in the last five years. We've had uh, a series of macroeconomic indicators which have not been very positive. We've had confidence in the economy which has been at historic lows. We've had uh, contracting performance, both in industry, agriculture, and service sector. Um, in light of all of that, uh, we do believe with uh, a change in governance, it has been like a breath of fresh air. Uh, we are tending to see confidence come up in the economy. And whilst uh, the economic growth being fueled by economic indicators is still some way off, uh, confidence is propping uh, the economy up in some way. The challenge remains in being able to sustain this over a period of time so that it starts making meaningful sense. Uh, the real challenge which India faces today uh, is both at an individual as well as at an institutional level. Uh, it does face the big challenge of competitiveness as an economy. Uh, Indian enterprises face the issue of competitiveness within the economy. Uh, we are celebrating through the day today most of these companies which have managed to use this period of extreme economic negativity to improve their processes, structures, create distinctive shareholder value, uh, fortify themselves uh, in bad times, and uh, ensure that they are poised for growth now that things have started to look up. We uh, are also here, uh, as one would say, to start a dialogue uh, and a conversation. We want to start a dialogue on what will drive India forward. We want to start a dialogue that encompasses tenets of competitiveness, innovation, people's strength, uh, manufacturing. We want this dialogue to eventually be reflected in policy, in guidance, in industry competitive benchmarking, and in our ability to judge ourselves, whether, is it, whether it is vis-a-vis -vis peers in India or whether it is peers globally. A lot is talked about India's inherent strengths, whether it's uh, the size of our market, the demographic dividend that we have, uh, the robustness of our democracy, which has really stood well in, uh, as a test of time. Uh, but I think in a world where we do not know how the world will be three years down the line, competitiveness is the only imperative that we have to focus on. And we were having a discussion a little while back where we were challenging ourselves as to find meaning as to why we still are so low in the competitiveness scale across the world. So with our kind of strengths, I think uh, the onus is upon us as industry to 
really build our competitiveness across the board. Uh, and that would mean uh, being able to leverage all the traditional strengths that we've just encountered and we've just talked about, whether it's dividend democracy, uh, a sense of uh, institutional infrastructure available. Uh, and we would need this to be driven by corporates in our own sense and uh, through the public mechanisms that exist. This event is also uh, critical to us because it is a coming together of industry uh, in a manner and mode where they are sharing a common vision of trying to improve competitiveness for India. And hence, it is important for us to leverage back our old theme of communication and spread this message wide. So uh, we at Roland Berger can only emphasize that we should cast the net wider. We should start talking about competitiveness. And we should really translate this, which is a meaningful beginning today, into a strong, sustainable movement. With that, uh, I welcome you all to this event. Uh, we are very, very thankful for Deborah and Shad to have come uh, and grace the occasion. We are thankful to all the industry leaders who have made this event and the journey to this event possible. Uh, this event has been in the making for the last six months. It has taken a lot of time, effort, and value commitment from you. And it is a reflection of how, de how closely you hold the notion of competitiveness across the board within your companies. Thank you so much. Wishing this event a great success. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, so this brings the whole event to a grand opening, and I would request Deborah to come over and actually say a few words and deliver a keynote address. Uh, so Deborah, please, welcome. Thank you, Amit. Well, good morning. I'm just delighted and honored to be here in India, in Delhi, to join you for the inaugural meeting of your National Competitiveness Forum and the Porter Prize and all the things that we're going to be doing today to uh, work together to create a prosperous and dynamic future for India, the United States, and the countries around the world. Um, let me first uh, formally commend uh, Dr. Meek Kapoor for his vision and leadership in moving forward uh, with Dr. Wilbur Aubrey to create the Indian Council on Competitiveness. Um, we are very, very proud at the Council on Competitiveness that back in April with our chairman, um, Sam Allen, the CEO and chairman of Deere & Company, we concluded a strategic MOU of collaboration. And uh, at the board meeting today, I think we developed a whole set of um, very exciting uh, potential initiatives that you all will be undertaking, but which we, of course, look forward to collaborating um, with you as well. We're also just very thrilled and delighted that the Indian Council on Competitiveness is a new member of the Global Federation of Councils on Competitiveness. This is a, a new NGO now in its fifth year that brings together the leaders of some 30 councils around the world. Uh, we'll be meeting in um, December in Canada, um, who will be hosting our meeting. And I can tell you when uh, Dr. Kapoor participated with us in Korea last year, um, his thought leadership and the, the tremendous things underway here in India really came to the fore of this agenda. And we're going to hear about this later today. My, my colleagues, uh, Chad Evans from the U.S. Council on Competitiveness and Roberto Alvarez from the um, Agency for Industrial Development in Brazil are going to share with you one of the first ever examples of using big data analytics to really decipher and understand what matters in competitiveness. So um, I think that, that you're going to find this just as we did at our National Competitiveness Forum last week in Washington, a very, very powerful and stimulating way to look at how real data is driving what we need to understand, but two, set us the agenda for what we need to do in our respective economies. Um, just let me quickly mention, the U.S. Council on Competitiveness is almost 30 years old. We are a nonprofit, nonpartisan uh, membership organization. We bring together leading CEOs, university presidents, labor leaders, and national lab directors. Our whole agenda is a powerful but simple one in terms of the mission, 
namely, how do we drive the increases in U.S. productivity growth so that we can maintain a growing, increased standard of living for all Americans and our enterprises can compete and prosper in the global economy. We have uh, pioneered the innovation movement in the United States. We have legislative accomplishments working with our governor, government at the federal level, at the state level, and regional level. Last week also, we just to give you an example of what we do in our activities, we convened our second American Energy Manufacturing Competitiveness Summit in partnership with the Department of Energy where we're looking at the, all the issues that impact how to drive energy productivity and efficiency into the entire manufacturing enterprise. And of course, as your new prime minister has talked about and Amit has already alluded to, um, transforming into a manufacturing future that moves out of the commodity, commoditized 20th century models is at the forefront of our agenda and yours as well. Um, Amit asked me to give a, a few uh, overarching comments about the global economy and what this means to all of our work. Um, we all know we're living in extraordinary times. It's, as I like to say, an era of turbulence, transition, and ultimately transformation. And they're just seismic shifts in the global landscape. But these are both uh, not only challenges, but huge opportunities. And of course, one of the drivers, and India's played a major role in accelerating this, is the digital revolution. It continues to reorganize and again transform the global economy with ubiquitous computing, moving into the Internet of Things, uh, the whole big data area I mentioned. Also, uh, in the United States, we are making the investments and understanding the potential to moving to exascale uh, supercomputing capability. And, you know, this is just the first stage of this information revolution that changes how we live and work and think as well. Um, I had the opportunity many years ago to visit Bangalore as a senior U.S. government official to see the early days of that um, incredible dynamic coming together of talent and people and investment that again propelled India into the leadership of the digital IT world. But you know, let's move beyond that because we are at the cusp of a profound technological change because the digital, biotechnology, nanotechnology, and cognitive revolutions are rewriting the rules of production and services in digital code, genetic code, atomic code, and neural code. And we can't even envision now how these technologies are going to shape the future. We can't envision yet where economic activity is going to flourish and where wealth and prosperity will be created. But we know that human progress will advance and that we need to be part of shaping this to the good of our nations, but also the global commons. Um, globalization, of course, has brought the resources of production and knowledge and technology and capital and skills into a wholly, whole, entirely mobile environment, almost like mobile computing. We have mobile skills and um, borderless production and global value change. You all know this as, as industrial leaders. Um, but this all, you know, accounts now for about 80% of global trade is these uh, global value change. And again, India has emerged as a very important player and contributor and partner in the global production and services chain of the world. And also, this gets to labor. You know, we, we like to say at the U.S. Council, if work is routine, if work can be digitized, work becomes commoditized, and the value comes really with the innovation that's placed on top of that and the skills that underpin all of this as well. And you couple that to the fact that we're facing tremendous global grand challenges, everything from uh, ensuring that we have enough food. You know, food production has to not just double, but some say triple by the year 2050. We have issues around um, climate change, climate disruption, whatever you want to call that, that impacts food, energy, and water. Uh, we also have tremendous challenges and opportunities around health. Um, you know, we're all concerned and struggling to understand exactly how to deal with this tremendous uh, escalating, really terrifying uh, pand pandemic of Ebola that's occurring right now and what this means to all of us and do we have the global institutions and capacity to deal with that. But you know, the good news is that we have a global market just full of opportunities with these powerful technological building blocks. And so, you know, what really becomes of great importance 
to economies and regions, and I include you know, the US and India and others around the world is in this, is that we have to really optimize our societies around innovation, because ultimately you can't compete and prosper around standardized commodity products and goods. And so when we look at innovation at the US Council on Competitiveness, and we're very proud that we pioneered the innovation movement back in the United States, really starting almost in 1995 when people weren't even using that terminology. If we look at kind of four building blocks and any issue you want to look at in the work of this Indian Council on Competitiveness and our collaboration can really be embraced if you look at talent, technology, investment, and infrastructure and look at that as interconnecting complex system that you need to modulate and grow depending on what your needs are. At the end of the day, of course, people are the ones who innovate, and so having a skilled workforce, and a workforce all the way from what we call highly technical middle skills to the most advanced science and technology researchers is something that um, we have to nurture and we have to grow. Um, another example of the talent uh, conundrum is to ensure that our countries are very inclusive and bring together the talent um, across the board, whether it is from different cultures. Obviously, we, we talked earlier today about the importance of women in the competitiveness movement, and I know here in India you have a, a tremendous stock of, of talented, creative, dynamic women as well. Um, let me say a little bit um, on the... Uh, issue of technology investment. You have so much to build on here in India with the great uh, institutes of technology, the ITT institutes. I had the opportunity to visit them uh, many years ago. Uh, I was the uh, head of international science and technology collaboration in the Reagan White House. And so I saw firsthand you know, where those institutes were then and where they are today. And the tremendous talent that's being developed um, to again, uh, be at the forefront of technological innovation, but also contribute to these grand challenges as well. Uh, we, we're saying in the United States that we're beginning to see an innovation deficit because our government is not doing the job it should be in making its long-term investments in basic research. So I hope you all don't fall into that trap as well because there has to be a continued government and private sector investment in research and development. On the investment side, having an optimal capital cost regulatory environment to attract and grow and retain high value investment is absolutely critical. Um, as I mentioned this morning in our clarion call for competitiveness, we gave grades for the first time and we gave the US a D when it comes to our capital infrastructure and regulatory environment with the highest corporate tax rate in the world, not having a territorial system, you know, we have over uh, $1.5 trillion stranded overseas because of double taxation. We think that's ridiculous to be competing on that as opposed to be competing on our innovation and the products and services. But the investment climate is huge. And one of the things that I would urge as you go forward in developing your agenda is to really ensure that you begin to make progress as your prime minister has articulated to deal with a lot of the administrative, red tape, bureaucratic challenges that in many ways have impeded India. And then I'll just mention on the infrastructure. Infrastructure is a very uh, all-inclusive um, concept. You know, there's an infrastructure for intellectual property protection. There's an infrastructure that's physical, that's digital. There's an infrastructure of intellectual ideas. But again, the infrastructure for innovation the logistic supply chain, the bridges, all of those things, you have the opportunity in India, and you're doing this actually to create the future. So let me just mention very briefly that as we go forward and we think of collaborating, what are some of the areas that are really at the frontier? Well, obviously I've mentioned energy and manufacturing, but I just want to share with you, manufacturing is moving out of the control of large-scale enterprises and it's being put in the hands of entrepreneurs with uh, 3D additive manufacturing, materials, the use of computer technology. We're seeing innovations that no one could even have dreamed of a few years ago. Last week we had the opportunity at our energy and manufacturing summit to see a young man come out on the stage driving the first ever uh, electric vehicle that was designed and completely made by 3D technology with the most advanced high-strength fiber 
uh, composite materials in the world in collaboration with Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And as he said, which was really stirring up the audience, he said, Tesla is the last gasp of the former age of the auto industry. So let's see where that takes us. But let me just conclude by saying that all of us are innovators, all of us are creators, and what's so exciting about working and partnering with India as one of the world's great democracies is that you do have such a rich tradition and culture of imagination and creativity. You value the arts. You know, we're not just talking about investing in STEM and science and technology. We need people who are conceptual thinkers. We need artists who think like engineers and engineers who think like artists. So I, I'm a uh, Bronze Age classical archaeologist, and you look at the Indus Valley civilization and the tremendous uh, cultural heritage of these great civilizations that were nurtured and grew here in India. These were people who thought at the forefront of creativity and imagination, and they accomplished things in their time that we can only wish to accomplish in our time as well. So let me just close by uh, giving a few uh, uh, admonitions for what we need to be doing together. And I'll, I'll uh, being someone who loves alliteration, I'll choose the letter B. I don't know why that came to me this morning, but it did after only having two hours of sleep. But I did get here thanks to the Star Alliance. But here's what we need to do together. We need to uh, think big. We need to be bold. We need to be brave. We have to be beneficent. We have to be brainy. And at the end of the day, we have to all be very busy. Thank you so much and look forward to being with you during this very important meeting today. Thank you.